with the, the request to uh, the chair of the session, Professor Rajendra Kumar Anayat, Vice Chancellor of uh, Dinamandu Chodoram University of Science and Technology, to kindly address us all. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Professor Batra Saab. I actually went back to my college days after listening to Professor Trivedi. Um, I think I better, I must keep quiet now because that's a kind of content to what he delivered. Wonderful. There is, it was a, simply a treat to my eyes, ears, and for my brain. I'm sure all the lucky people who were able to listen him now, let me use the word listen, not hear, because a lot of other noises were coming in between. So hearing will not work out, only listening will work out. So those who were lucky to listen him would have got something out of it. I'm a hardcore engineer and I don't know what to speak. Uh, my background, I'm sure you would have seen a small printing press, which is my passion, which is my love, which I kept. It's a virtual background, but it is really in my mind. I believe the uh, journey of the literature, so far if we look, it started from the simple body gestures to the ululations and to the hieroglyphics and the oral tales of literature and then the written word. And after that, the printing that came, which helped a lot in the journey of literature. And everyone thinks that uh, John Gutenberg, who did printing for the world, but that is wrong. Real printing press designed in China 700 years ago of Gutenberg. And a gentleman called Baishen, he was the one who designed the first printing press. It was a clay plus wooden printing press in which the first book printed was an Indian work. It's a Buddhist work called Diamond Sutra. It's the Vajra Sutra, what you call. That was the book which was printed. And then came to Caxton, Gutenberg, and the, the computers and to the robots and the artificial intelligence, whatever you talk about today. So this was just a medium of expression of human creativity and our imagination. And Professor Saab has clearly told, like there is no point in having any stereotype, like we, we are perceived in this way. That is very true. Every country is perceived in that way. I had opportunity to be in Germany to teach and to be there. So every country has its own stereotype, it is true. So we don't need to be worried about it. There is nothing wrong in that. I do agree with him. And then the literature helped us to deal with the, some speculative questions like regarding God or philosophy or ethics, morality, science and world, how all these things are functioning around us. And later to entertain, educate and influence. And it went on changing times. And uh, with the establishment of organized state powers, that we wanted to control the human mind through propaganda. George Orwell's novel 1984, published in 1949, points to this horrible fact. And it continued in different forms in different countries with the different works. It's a dystopian novel that hints an imaginary world which we know. And now, as professors have said, the world is going to change completely. To know more about it, the best book to read is, I used to tell my students also, Professor Yuval Noah Harari's book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, which will tell you exactly how democracy is changing, how our thinking pattern is changing, how all these medias are going to influence us. 
So from the technical perspective as an engineer, what I was looking is how all these things are going to affect us. I felt like uh, there is a huge influence of artificial intelligence, other similar digitization in our literature today. Because graphic novels, literature, art is seamless with countless possibilities now. Five years ago, I, I just came out with a small book. I don't know. I'm not able to show this. Otherwise, this, uh, because my background is virtual, probably I may have to just change it. Let me see if I can do that. This book, uh, just a minute. We can see it now. Yeah, no. no, I hope now you'll be able to see. So this more of a technology scout book. So what I have seen in the last 10, 20 years, it's not possible to keep the audience lively with the, what you do. So for an example, this particular book, when you want to read to keep the people with me, I have to have some kind of virtual reality or augmented reality in this book. So here, when I hold my mobile on this book, you will see, you can see some uh, author's picture on this. Can you see? I don't know whether you can see it. You can see some picture in my mobile. If I, if I touch on this, it will take me to that website and that particular person will start speaking to me also. So what I am trying to do is, I am trying to link that individual to talk to me at the same time. So this is the way the world is changing now. So in this changing world, when this is, this is another book printed, I mean, written by my friend in the recent past, Print Become Electronics. This digital, this digital disruption, nobody can help it. This is going to happen. So my main worry today is not all these. Where are we heading now? So some of the points which I just noted down to ask this audience here and these great scholars here, whether in the coming time this AI generated literature replace the traditional printed literature born of human imagination creativity? This is one of the questions which I would like to know. And second could be, can it deal with the questions of ethics and human values? And the third point is, can it replace the very complex but interesting and creative process, which involves a lot of human emotions? And the fourth point, will not the modern state or some ruthless despot use AI to control the human mind and controlling the robots or AI machines, thus destroying the imagination of human mind and its possibilities. So I believe here comes the need for, maybe for the next time when you talk about, you need to do a manan mantan or chintan on a topic, something like how to bring the control and balance needed between the AI generated literature and the human made literature. Because there are, I know there are the content of a Bloomberg, if you take, I think only 20% is human generated and the rest 80% rest by robotic systems. There are scientific papers which are prepared and written by robots in the coming time. So where are we going to position ourselves? What will be the future of real creative literature experts like Professor Trivedi? After 50 years or 100 years, I don't know where we will position ourselves. So this is one dimension that we should discuss in the coming time. With that small note, thanking Batra Sahib, I have nothing more to say. It was a wonderful treat from Professor Trivedi and I'm sure others also. So I want to listen others too. <coughs> and one more small thing, joke apart, by next year, July, I may not be here as a VC. I would become a former VC. Don't forget to call me as an audience at least. That's the only request I have. So 
With that note, let me conclude thanking each one of you.